Hello. Hi, everyone. How's everybody's Savannah Expo going? Okay, you got it. You can do better than that. I said, how's everyone's Savannah Expo going? That's what I like to hear. Well, I'm very, very, very excited for our guest today. Uh, I mean, you know her from Street Fighter, Stargate Universe, The Voice of Milan, and of course, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Please welcome Ming Na Wen. Well, I mean, just naming off all the films that you've been in, TV shows, it seems that you're always playing the best kick-ass roles out there. Thank you. So I want to know, do you go after these roles, or do these roles come and find you? I don't know. I mean, if you believe in, you know, life synergies and things, I think it is a combination of that and uh, uh, luck. A lot of luck. You need a lot of luck in that. Uh, being an actress. Um, I don't know, I think, I think it's because maybe the casting people see that in me or I give off that energy, um, but I'm really kind of a wimp. <laughs> I don't believe it. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just being modest. <laughs> okay, I'm also slightly obsessed with your car. Is it Lolita? Okay, uh, first of all, who follows me on Twitter? I like that. And for all those who aren't, you have to follow me on Twitter or Instagram right now. Do it. Let's break it. You're yeah, so my, fun on social media. You really are. My Twitter is um, just that Ming Nam. Nothing else. Just Ming Nam. <laughs> and then uh, my Instagram account is Ming Na underscore when. And uh, I want to hear from all of you, so start doing that. Um, but yeah, I, I love my car. It's uh, I, I I got from my wonderful husband this red Corvette, oh. Oh. Stingray Z51. It is such a badass car, and I did not know, and he did not know that Black Widow drew uh, drove in Captain America, the Winter Soldier, I believe, or, yeah. Um, a black version of it. What? So, you know, <laughs> it's all connected. But because Colson's Lola is also a Corvette, right? So I named my car Lolita because I feel like she is the granddaughter or daughter, <laughs> cousin of Lola. <laughs> she doesn't fly though. Yeah, that's okay, that's okay, she's beautiful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, I want to talk about Stargate Universe um, because I work with the Space Channel and Interspace did a fantastic panel with you guys. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know what your reaction was to the cancellation of the show because, I mean, we still have people writing in being so angry. Uh, it was sad because it was an amazing show. We had an incredible cast and writers and producers and it was so much fun. We shot up in the other side of Canada, Vancouver. Uh, I know. I love, I love Vancouver. Um, and uh, it was really sad, you know, because 
the other Stargate series had gone on and on and on, and I think because the producers were really itching to do something a little bit different, so they made um, the, our Stargate a little bit darker. Um, it just, you know, it didn't take at first, but then the, the throngs of fans that were so upset when the show got canceled and ended in sort of like this ambiguous, everybody's floating out in space in deep sleep kind of thing. Um, hopefully it lends itself to a movie or something to finish it off. Yeah, yeah let's get that going. But you know, in deep sleep, I think you're supposed to stay the same age, so it better not be too long. <laughs> well, you moved on to an amazing show, Marvel Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and I want to talk about this past season. Uh, did everybody, everyone's up to date, did everyone remember the episode Melinda? My favorite. I'm not just saying this is your beside me. No, no, I'm not. I'm I not think really you not. are. No, I'm not. Maybe a little bit. I'm just, just a little bit. Agent, but that's okay. I like hearing it. Did you make hearing me? Uh, it was just so fantastic to see the other side uh, to May's character, and of course, you know, understanding the history behind the cavalry. What was that like for you? Well, um, you know, her cavalry name just—it was such a mystery, and it kept being a mystery for so long that when the, when our writers told me that they were going to finally, finally reveal what happened to her, I was a little bit nervous, I was a little bit concerned because the build-up had been in about a year and a half, so what if it doesn't live up to that expectation? Um, but they did an amazing job in writing the story and uh, I was just so thrilled, you know, and honored that they wanted to um, explore that part of May, which for me hopefully helps the audience to really understand, you know, that she had um, PTS and, and those are some really real issues that we deal with on our show aside from the fantastical, we all have superpowers or we're all really talented in killing or hurting people <laughs> and doing some spy stuff. Um, so it was really fun getting to do uh, some research and get into your background because I came across Belinda. Do you guys know? Is that what it is? Belinda? Oh, oh, Phil Phil Belinda. Yeah, Belinda. This yeah. is the Phil Coulson and Melinda May like obsession fan fiction. So many people just assume or want these characters to get together. Is this fun for you to like kind of... There's pictures, there's videos. Are there, are there fans here for... Uh, Colson and May yeah. Really? That's, it's awesome. Thank <laughs> you. It is, but uh, you know, um, I guess <laughs> they don't flirt, you know. <laughs> Maybe that's the thing. Maybe that is the thing. I think um, there's just such a bond between Colson and May and the history that they have, having, um, you know, the backstory for Melinda, you realize that they were. Uh, also, um, they, they went through the academy together, so they have a lot of history. And yeah, sometimes that's the best kind of love, is coming through friendship and having a shared history and betraying each other and lying to each other. <laughs> It's all love, man. All love. It's just the music videos made on YouTube are hilarious. I was like with Teddy and AJ, if you watch Inner Space, I was like, guys, check this one out. Like, it's so funny. So much fandom surrounding this show. Why do you think it's a show that connects with so many viewers? Uh, I think that's a question for the audience. Um, but my take on it is because I'm such a huge nerd and geek, and I'm I'm such a fan of you know all this whole genre, everything. How crazy are we about Star Wars this year, first of all? Yeah. I was so upset that I couldn't go out on Force Friday yesterday <laughs> and buy some toys. Um, but it, you know, I am one of you guys when it comes to this stuff. And so when I go to work every day, even when it's at, you know, 3.30 in the morning and I feel like crap. Um, I, I get so excited because it is an incredible sandbox to be in and I think the reason why Marvel is so good at connecting 
to the people is because they're telling human stories in a fantastical world. Um, it's about humanity, it's about connection, family, and, uh, and learning uh, whether you can you know, trust and, and believe in people when they've turned on you and um, just all those elements and, and, and dealing with your own inner demons, which a lot of these characters deal with. So in that sense, I think, plus the explosions and the fight scenes <laughs> and the humor, I yeah. think that all adds to it. Well, it's the perfect time. I know you guys have some questions. So if you have some questions, we're actually going to do a line right starting there with Stefano. So if you guys are ready, yeah, that's perfect. There we go. The running is hard. Only personal questions. I only answer personal, very personal questions. <laughs> oh my God, you're the best. <laughs> I love the running. It's so fun. <laughs> Ready. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, so Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is a show that like we're all so excited about. What scene or sequence or whatever from either uh, season were you most excited to film, like looking forward to? Uh, most excited? I would say the pilot. You know, just the fact that I got this great gig and I'm working with Joss Wheaton. Um, that's <laughs> my co-stars and the, the crew and the team and, you know, I'm flying a plane, <laughs> just stuff like that. I think the pilot episode was my most excited. And then now every, you know, every new season is always exciting. It's like going back to school, but better. <laughs> Hi, um, I've watched, like, watched your show for a long time since like ER and you were amazing. We grew up together, you know? <laughs> Long haul. Awesome. Um, I just want to know a um, couple questions. Um, first of all, like, what's it like being a woman of color, like, in a sci-fi sort of set? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I know a lot of Asian girls look up to you now that you're on Shield. Um, it's it's fantastic to see finally see a lot of um, women of color in these um, in in sci-fi because it's, it's, it's such a it's such a hard place for Asian and other colored people of color to break into. What are your thoughts on that? And also, are you involved in the prank war slash shenanigans on set? And and uh, like, have you, do you have a favorite? Um, okay, one question at a time. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, it's it's always been a struggle as an Asian. Uh, woman to break into the business in the first place, whether it's in any medium. And uh, I think I've, I've had the great fortune of having people who believe in me or wanting to hire me and work with me. Uh, and it's, it's, it is exciting. It's, it thrills my heart. I mean, I just met a couple of girls today who, um, you know, just looking at their faces and feeling that connection that I've somehow either inspired them or, you know, have gave them someone who can be a role model. I, you know, I'm, I have a daughter of my own who really doesn't look up to me, I have to say. <laughs> so I'm doing something wrong there. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, it's, it, it is, it is a, a wonderful perk of my profession. Uh, the whole idea of getting into this business was because I wanted to be part of a community and to be able to entertain people. And if you can entertain them and inspire them, that's, that's just a great honor and perk. And as far as the pranks, nah, I don't, I'm, I'm so serious on set. I'm a total professional. I would never, ever try to prank my co-stars. Anyway. <laughs> oh, where did I put that whoopee cushion? <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, so my question is, what, since you haven't been in an Avengers movie yet, which kind of Avenger would it you sucks. like? Yeah, I know. I say it. I think it sucks too. 
but if you were to be in a movie going forward, which I totally think you should be, which would you want to be in the Avengers, or which Avenger would you want to be in a movie with? Okay, first of all, I'm a whore when it comes to work. I will take any job. <laughs> so if anybody here, you know, has something they can offer, I'll talk. Um, <laughs> no, my ultimate dream to be in a Star Wars movie. <laughs> Infinity 3 posters, they had a Marvel world, they had the Disney world, and then they had the Star Wars world, okay? Mulan is part of uh, Infinity 3. May hasn't gotten there yet, but Mulan, but I'm like, I'm in two, I just need that one more! <laughs> Twitter, you need to let George Lucas, Disney, Star Wars, J.J. Abrams, anybody! I just, I just want to walk on in a Star Wars film before I die. Okay, guys, we can make that happen. And then, you know, of course, any of the Marvel movies would be fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? Was that evil? desperate? I think that, that sounded really good. No, I told you, I'm, I'm not May. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Um, how were you able to relate to your character in your Asian Sophie? Uh, you mean May? Yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, she is one of my most challenging characters because she is such an antithesis of who I am when it comes to her personality. And uh, because as you can tell, I talk a lot. And she doesn't. I smile and laugh a lot. She definitely doesn't. And uh, um, it, it, I think it's about her, um, her internal strength, that, that we have a lot in common. And, uh, and also, she hides her emotions, you know, behind this, <laughs> shield. No, <yeah. laughs> I've been waiting for that. It. <laughs> this armor of you know uh, that that it, I, I'm hoping that in season three she'll break through a little bit from it. But um, for me, you know, I handle things in an opposite way. You know, with humor and because I, I think if you can't laugh at your troubles, then you're in trouble. So that's. You know, those are certain elements that I think we really, and oh, yeah, I'm so good at flying a plane and, you know, jumping out of a plane and parachuting and kicking ass, yeah. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Thank you. I'm lying. I think I just broke a nail today, too. Hi. Um, in Hi. early season two, you did a fight scene between Agent May and Agent 33. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I was wondering how it was for you to like learn both sides of the choreography and how you ended up filming it. Um, a lot of hard work, you know, I'll be honest. It, 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 that episode scared the bejesus out of me. It was, you know, when I read it, I was like, yeah, this is so great. I can't Oh my goodness, and I have to ballroom dance <laughs> and fight in heels. And then, you know, Anne Foley, who I love dearly, she's our um, uh, costume head of, of the show, designer. And, uh, and she wanted to put me in this really sparkly, you know, silver dress. I'm like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I have to fight in this, you know, plus fighting in lingerie, which then scared me even more. So the whole episode, was a like it freaked me out but you know we we trained for about three days learned both sides of the choreography I have an amazing stunt team I'm um, headed by uh, Tana Gill and um, and and we had uh, and you know my, my stunt double was incredible actually we had several stunt doubles because each one of them got to just wear the one outfit they didn't have to switch back and forth between the lingerie and the silver dress like I did. So they had it a little easier, but we, yeah, we definitely had to coordinate everything and figure out, you know, um, how, to, how to shoot that. And it was a lot of fun. A lot of work. 
I, and I chipped a couple of teeth because of it too. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, because uh, we, we were working like it was like a 17 hour day and we were all tired and I didn't duck in time. Uh, <laughs> oh! <laughs> I feel your pain because I uh, lost a nail myself. You did not! <laughs> yes, I did. Oh, did you just hate that and it feels funny? And, you need a and it's nail annoying because I'm in costume right now. No. So I'm not sure if you can tell all of us here in the audience, but um, can we expect that season three of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. be connected with the upcoming Captain America Civil War? Ooh. <laughs> I'd rather answer a really, really personal question <laughs> than that one. Then you might not see Agent May anymore. <laughs> Normally, Zach's are right behind this blacker and I'm not Yeah, you don't know, but there, there are people watching. I can't answer. Sorry. Just tune in September 29th when we come back. Oh, you guys are going to be so blown away. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great season. Hello. Hi. Because who doesn't love in humans? <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank you for Mulan, because not all of us were princess lovers, and that was my absolute favorite. Uh, uh, secondly, you've been in so many wonderful different genres of movies. What fairy tale character would you want to play uh, if you got a chance to play any fairy tale character? Tough question. That's like, what, what would you play, Morgan? I don't know. That is a really good question. I mean, because they've all, you know, yeah. they've all been played out. Um, I mean, if I was like maybe 10 years, 15 years younger, you know, they're doing a live action Mulan. <laughs> I would, I would love to have had that chance to play, you know. I mean, maybe they could do Mulan the later years. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe Peter Pan. Yeah. Why well, do you be fun? Some Peter Pan. Yeah, but then again, yeah. 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 <laughs> later years. Peter okay. Pan, later years. <laughs> okay. Hi, I just wanted to say, uh, I was wondering who you think would win between a fight, Agent May or Mulan? Oh, that's such a good question. Wow. Uh, uh, I think Mulan was like, you know, Agent May's ancest ancestry. Ancestry. So, yeah, it's in her blood. Probably Mulan. She's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hi, it's uh, lovely that you could come here. And we're. Uh, lovely to be here. Thank you. Um, sort of. <laughs> that, guy, that guy's been looking at me. <laughs> My question is, are we going to see you in the Dub Smash Wars? <laughs> you were in that war before, but you were in one of them. Yeah, I was in, it's, it's been quite a fun, I, you know, as again, I'd rather answer really personal <laughs> I will say that there will be an ongoing um, showcase. <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. A lot of fun, awesome. yeah. <laughs> oh, and for those of you who don't know, um, Clark Gregg and Chloe got into it with Haley Atwell and James Darcy of Agent Carter. They yeah. a great Marvel show that's coming back. And, uh, and they got into this thing called Dub Smash because uh, Haley absolutely loves the Dub Smash stuff. And, and it all started at San Diego's Comic Con. And then it became just this running thing between the four of them. And, and, and the cast got involved with one of them. But, um, and now they're doing one for charity. So it's kind of, it's kind of fun. So, so now you're on Twitter, on Instagram, you know. Yeah. Okay. And they're hilarious. Yes, hilarious. 
Hi, so I just want to thank you for Mulan and all that as like an Asian woman as well. Just like being able to have that representation as a child was a really big deal. Also, a friend of Sam Joe says hi. Um, but Sorry, my says hi? a friend of Sam Joe. Oh, yeah. You know Sammy. My friend says no Sammy. Oh, your friend knows Sammy. Yeah, she's, she's over there. Yeah, Sa yeah. Sammy Joe is uh, one of my amazing stunt women who uh, was also part of the um, episode where Melinda May fought Agent 33. And now she's gone, going off to pursue her own acting career. So she's not like <laughs> So my question is about Stargate Universe. Um, in regards to either the plot or your character, uh, how would you have liked the story to have progressed if it wasn't canceled? <laughs> um, who cares? It's canceled. <laughs> um, I think uh, I would have loved to have seen her reunite with her uh, love one back on Earth and had an opportunity to um, fulfill whatever destiny's destiny. Destiny's Destiny. Oh, okay. The, the ship's name was Destiny. That's why I got a little confused there. Um, but uh, yeah, I think so. Because uh, actually the character I played on Stargate Universe, to my surprise, was uh, a lesbian. And, uh, and I never played one before. And my husband was really, really happy about it. <laughs> That's a personal. <laughs> so you went into the casting and you didn't know that was the character? No, no, oh, wow. that was that was uh, you know a big surprise for me. But it was cool. It was yeah. really you know stuff like that that makes my job fun and unpredictable. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> So a couple of weeks ago, Brett kind of dished on your Apple Box secrets um, when you're on the table to deal with your height and how you kind of fell off it at one point. I was wondering if you had any embarrassing Brett. stories about him. Look at him. Look at him. About, okay, uh, for those of you in the know and for those of you who aren't, Apple boxes are just basically boxes made out of wood. It's one of the oldest things that Hollywood uses for everything and it's amazing. It just is the only thing that I think has remained um, a staple in, in uh, filming. And uh, they have different sizes, quarter boxes, half boxes, full boxes, and uh, because Brett is so tall, and I'm not, even in heels, a lot of times when we do close-ups, uh, those extra like two or three inches really help the camera crew to be able to go back and forth more easily or it just looks better. So a lot of times I have to use Apple boxes. <laughs> because I'm not that tall. I just look tall on camera. So yeah. But yeah, I fall off of them all the time. <laughs> because I'm really a klutz. I'm so not age of May. I'm gonna just keep that. He did say that. you fell off very gracefully though. When you forget you're on them and go to step off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know they build like two or three out and sometimes you're walking around on them and you forget. So. <laughs> there should be actually a railing on the stage for me, just in case. Hello, Agent Colson and of the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. No. And, wow. and a Comic Con 2013 attendee. Hey, I, I first want to express my appreciation for all your work, Mulan, Two and a Half Man, and Stargate Universe, and finally, Agent May. Uh, my question is. I'll my husband I... wasn't happy that I had to be in bed with Charlie Sheen. That's another, <laughs> that's another personal. <laughs> My question is, how surprised were you to find out that it was, it was Coulson who was behind Tahiti? Oh, uh, well actually, well, I mean, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah. you know, it was actually Fury that was behind Tahiti, and Coulson found out about it. So, um, what's your question? <laughs> Sorry. Um, that 
I, you know, when and May dug up that uh, the USB and found that uh, yeah. video footage uh -huh. revealing that Coulson was the director on Tahiti at the guest house. I was, you know, the result in all the hypergraphia and carving and all that stuff. Right, right. Well, yeah. I mean, Coulson was actually the victim of it because Fury made the decision to um, bring him back to life through this method. You need to rewatch that episode. <laughs> 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 Okay, if you watch that episode and then tweet me, and I'll answer that question. You'll have a new question, I think. How you got another one? Uh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you get told ahead of time, like where things are going to go, or is it like you guys just all wait for the script to come in? Is she funny through? in her signing? I'm just wondering. <laughs> are, you fu are you funny in your signing? Because is the jokes coming through? <laughs> or does it get lost in translation? <laughs> Just, oh, he's saying, what's, what's he saying? I'm scared, I get it. I get oh, it. I think I get it. There you go. All right. Just curious. Uh, so what's it like for you when you get a script? I mean, do, do people tell you, okay, this is, where we're, this is where we're going with your character, this is what's happening here, or are you just as surprised as we are when you're getting like that script? Um, we, that, the latter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, very seldom, like, okay, uh, I will give a little tidbit. My, my writer came up to me the other day and said, oh my goodness, there's some really great stuff coming up for you, for HMA. I'm like, yeah, what? <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> okay, I'm like, do not tease me that way. It is so cruel. It, but they do that. They enjoy, they enjoy doing that, but they really can't give us anything. Occasionally, they will let us know a script beforehand but that's about it and i kind of enjoy it i i you know this is our third season into it and for me it's almost like opening up the next chapter of a great book you know you don't know what's going to happen and then you play accordingly to that hi um i actually have two questions for you um i heard you collect bracelets and I was wondering, could I give you one now? Because I actually have to run afterwards. Of course, okay. please. And a second question. Um, when exactly did you decide you want to be an actress? And how was your parents' reaction to it? <laughs> um, my, my desire for acting like started in third grade when I did my first, I guess, play. It was an Easter play, and I played a bunny rabbit. Um, yeah, it was really good. I, I, I got on stage and tripped and fell, and, and the audience laughed, and I thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> I got a reaction from the audience, and that was it, the, you know, the acting bug bit. Um, and then uh, my parents thought, you know, I was, wasn't really serious about it until I wanted to get you know, a good drama program under my belt. So I chose Carnegie Mellon because they have an incredible drama um, program. And my mother's reaction was basically, oh, America's so easy. <laughs> she couldn't believe that you could actually get a degree in acting. <laughs> so that kind of legitimized it a bit for, for her. <laughs> But up until then, she wasn't very happy about it. Oh, it's so easy. Yeah. Really? That's my mom. Oh, thank you so much. Are you dressed as Melinda too? Yeah. I love it! Oh, yeah. So, you collect your bracelet? Uh, yeah, I... You know, this started off as a, a fluky thing, again on Twitter, because um, some fans noticed that I wore beaded bracelets, and they said, oh, you like beaded bracelets? I'm like, oh, I love beaded bracelets. And then the next con I went to, <laughs> all these fans started handing me beaded bracelets, and I was so amazed. So now, like, I feel like it's just such an amazing way to bond with the fans, uh, because I do wear them all the time. And this one, actually, a fan made one with a shield little Aww. logo that I wear. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. And I collect one everywhere I go, so 
I got one from Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> Three other ones right now, so. Hi, Mulan. Hi. Um, Mulan is one of my favorite movies, so I was wondering what was the process of creating a voice for Ping, and do you have a favorite line from the movie? Oh, um, whew, I, uh, I, I, I think with Ping it just kind of was organic, you know, we were just goofing around with certain ideas and, you know, just trying to figure out what would be a guy voice for a young girl. Um, and that just came about, you know, from trial and error. Um, but as far as my favorite line, it's actually my favorite song. I, I, you know, for her, she's, she's got several lines, um, but I think my favorite song is, is uh, just, you know, a Follow Your Heart um, from Stevie Wonder. Was it the Stevie Wonder one? Yeah, be true. Yeah, be true to your heart. Yeah, that one. So. I know you long to say it, but you can stay forever at the very end of the movie. The grandmother. I'm sorry. It's like my favorite line ever. It has nothing to do with Mulan. I'm sorry. Hi. Um, Hi. <laughs> my name's David. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm Asian, and I. <laughs> Um, I had to become a stereotype. My, my parents forced me to become a doctor, and but when I look at I you, I played one on TV. <laughs> yeah! you, you know how we know that ER is not really too realistic is because there's only one agent on that show. Actually, yeah, my, my question's about, so, to me, your huge impact starts with the Joy Luck Club, and then you go on to um, Mulan and, and Street Fighter, where there are more, you're Asian, therefore you have to play an Asian role. And now, you're in a role where it's, you're awesome, and you just happen to be Asian. I'm, I'm wondering, do you feel that you've helped pioneer, did you help establish a change in North American television, where you've gone from the Fu Manchu stereotype? Well, I don't want to brag. <laughs> But it's all because of me. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, I, I appreciate your comments. I, I think I, I do have some, you know, uh, because I've been around so long and I've been working in Hollywood for so long that I do feel that I am a pioneer. <laughs> So no, that I've <laughs> that I've actually, you know, um, have uh, further the the cause for more Asians, you know, being seen. But ultimately, I never ever took it personally because I always believed in um, economics and the power of economics. And a lot of times, it really is about what's going to sell. And because now television shows and movies, everything is so global and it's so international, and there are so many Asians in the world <laughs> that um, I feel because of that in combination with just, you know, what's going on here in America about wanting more diversity that it's, it's really a combination of all those things that's uh, helped to bring more Asians into, you know, into the limelight, which is great, I, you know, I, I love it. Thank you. Um, this is in regards to your ER days. Uh, I'm, my dad was a doctor, so I know some of the medical love. Did you have much problem understanding the medical term, terminology you had to do, and... Uh... Mm-hmm. <laughs> I only played one. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating because we had amazing doctors and nurses on set to constantly teach us all the moves and, and all the procedures, and, and, I, and I remember the first time I learned um, to play, uh, to, to play, to, to learn to stitch, 
I actually had to stitch on a real pork foot. I don't know why, that, but apparently the skin is very, you know, similar to human beings. So, yeah, that was, that was weird. <laughs> and I'd rather cook it. <laughs> to uh, use Raina's words, uh, if you or any of your characters were an inhuman, what would you want to become? just make money appear anywhere. <laughs> and then I could be able to give it to everybody. No, I don't know. <laughs> and bring peace to the world. <laughs> so I win the crown. <laughs> Hi. Um, so I have two questions. And the first one is, if you could write or direct your own episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., what would it be about and who would be in it? Wow. Um. Uh, let's see. Chris Hemsworth as Thor comes to mind. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you know, Jeremy Renner and Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson and Chris Evans. All right. Um, basically, all the big movie stars would be in my show. <laughs> Uh, I, don't, I don't know, I, I would love to um, answer that question, but I just love to do acting. I, as ambitious as I am for other things, and as much as I love photography and cinem, you know, the cinematics of working as a director, I don't know if I can handle the pressure that our directors go through, because we have to shoot an incredibly difficult show in eight days plus a ninth that we don't talk about. But, <laughs> but it's really, really challenging. And if you knew the amount of work that all our set designers and set decorators and costume people and makeup and hair people, it, it's a lot of pressure. And, you know, I'm lazy. <laughs> no, but yeah, I, I wouldn't do it, given the opportunity. But I would cast all those people to be my episode. And um, my second question is, if you still remember, could you please recite the final admonition oh. for Mulan? <laughs> the admonition? <laughs> that the um, matchmaker asks Mulan to say. Oh, oh dear lord. Girlfriend. <laughs> Girlfriend, I don't even know what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Let me, let me just look it up. <laughs> you know it? Um, maybe. <laughs> uh, you, you, you do it. You do me the honor. Oh, oh my god. Um, am I supposed to act it out? Or do you <laughs> to act? Yes, you need to act it out. Um, oh my god. <laughs> Fulfill your duties respectfully and reflect before you snack. Act. Wow. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, uh, that's so good. That's so good. Now I'm going to have to go back and memorize that damn thing. <laughs> hi. Oh, oh hi, doggy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's Kira. Um, hi, Kira. <laughs> My question is, um, when you were playing Agent May, um, you commented on this um, a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. how your uh, character mostly communicates with her eyes and subtle gestures. But what I want to know is, how hard was it not to crack up when Coulson had an entire conversation with you, and basically you said nothing, and his last remark was, well, good chat. Did it take, <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah, it take you more than one shot to do that? <laughs> Yeah, no, we have a lot of fun, and uh, and yeah, I crack up a lot. <laughs> you know, one of my notes that I get constantly from my directors or producers, writers, because uh, usually the writer of the episode is on set, um, and they're usually the producers too. One of the producers um, is uh, the note I always get is. <clears throat> 
Less Ming, more May. <laughs> yeah, I tend to, yeah, I tend to crack up easily, so it's hard to play her sometimes. <laughs> She's so serious. You do really well. Thank you. Maybe you need to crack up, you know, to like release the tension of being so kind of, I don't want to say she's pent up, but you know, mm -hmm. very serious. That's, oh, she's very serious. Oh, hi. Hey. Hey. So, given the current state of the cinematic universe and the large amount of characters and TV shows being introduced every year, is there any character or TV show that you'd like me to interact with or a specific character you'd like to go to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Oh, um, well, Scandal. <laughs> I think May and Pope would really be able to handle it. You know? Yeah, so that, that would be kind of cool um, on ABC. And I just love Sandra Rhymes, so I just love to work with her. Talk about a woman with power. She is incredible. Okay, guys, we just have time for a couple of more questions. Hi. Hi. Thank you, Thank you for all that you've done. Um, uh, my question is, is there any advice that you would give to yourself when you're younger, um, and what would you give to people today? It, what advice would I give to myself if I, when if you're I younger. Um, time warp kind of thing? Uh, um, hmm. Uh, that... Oh, such a personal question. <laughs> um, I think, I think, yeah, I think uh, I, I would tell myself to really appreciate youth and enjoy it and not, and, and just look in the mirror and go, oh damn, she's pretty cute. <laughs> because I grew up with a sort of, you know, not, not such a good image of who I was because growing up in a white suburban neighborhood, you know, being one of the only Asians, it was, it, I, you know, I wanted to be blonde and Caucasian like everybody else. And uh, I think I was also, you know, little, little, I don't know. I don't know what, what I would give myself. I, I think I would just say that you're beautiful, you can do anything you want, you know, and, uh, and just, Enjoy youth. Yeah. Because I say that to myself now, every day. <laughs> That's my affirmation, every day. Hey, uh, what lessons have you learned while working on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and other shows you've been on, like ER and Stargate Universe? I mean, what other what? What lessons have you learned while working on the various oh. sets you have? Um, <laughs> uh, I learn all the time. I mean, on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I learn uh, stunt fighting, which I'm, I'm so honored by our stunt team because it is an art form, you know? We really don't hit each other. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes, by accident. <laughs> I remember one time I, I punched a stunt double's abs by accident. Like, he kept going, just punch me, we're gonna just punch me, don't worry about it. It's not gonna hurt. I punched him so hard and I bruised all my knuckles. Oh. Because he really had hard abs. <laughs> so yeah, so I learned to pull back now. I don't really, you know, go full all out because I get too many bruises and they don't look pretty. Um, but uh, yeah, so stunt fighting for sure on this show. Um, I, don't, I learn everything, you know, from makeup and hair to uh, special makeups. Uh, I'd love to learn to sew. I should, I should hop over to wardrobe department and learn how to sew. But, yeah. But I can't really operate on you guys from ER. I'm just saying. Call 911. Um, I just wanted to say that I'm really excited that you're here, and I actually freaked out when I um, saw I did a little dance around the house, and if anyone was home, I would have gotten, like, sent to a mental hospital. And um, my question is, who is your favorite co-star on S.H.I.E.L.D. from either season one or season two, and why? You're, you're like, giving me a Sophie's <laughs> Choice moment here. I know you're too young to know what that means, but... Um, no, I, I love them all. I love them all very much. That's it. <laughs> 
Hi. Hi. I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I'm really happy I got the chance to ask my question. Uh, okay. I'm from Montreal, and I hope you like enjoyed your time in Montreal with your family. It was I beautiful. I was two blocks away from you when you snapped that Hydra pic with the pillow. And I had to go to work, and I was like, oh, I should run back. <laughs> but I was like, oh, she's with her family. I don't want to embarrass her. That is so... Well, now, now you're less than two blocks away from me. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're right here in the room. So I have uh, two very short questions. My first question is uh, on the set of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. If you've ever had any cool pranks, either that you did or that you got caught by someone else. Like, you guys ever have really good chemistry and, like, seem to look fun people. So if you have that... They don't dare pull pranks on me. <laughs> oh, now, now if I say that and they get back to the, they get back. If you tweet that, they'll probably be pulling pranks on me. Um, yeah. What was the other question? I'm sorry. Um, well, the, the prank question, and then I think she's going to ask the second question. Oh, okay. Um, the second question is actually about Mulan. Do you think um, your personality influenced her as a character and her strong impact on you? Or was it the other way around and she influenced how you wound up being with your personality? Um, I, I think the writers already infused um, a certain quality in Mulan when they wrote the, uh, when they wrote the story and uh, as they were evolving, because it, it was a three year process in recording Mulan. So I think there was definitely a synergy back and forth between who I was and, and you know who Mulan was and that it evolved. Um, but there, there was one gesture that I remember when I took my parents to see the movie and you know my parents they don't see cartoons. So they, when they went to see the movie, one of the things that both my parents were so astounded with was when Mulan was talking to her father and she you know was stroking her hair like this. And uh, because I, I stroke my hair, it's so weird. I would look at certain like <clears throat> Twitter stuff and I'm like, I'm always freaking stroking my hair. I had no idea I did that. And, uh, and they were the ones that first, you know, noticed that gesture and go, oh my goodness, we see you in the animation. How did they do that? So yeah, I think there was a definite synergy between the two. Yeah. I'm so sorry, guys. We are out of time for questions. Aww. I know. I Thank know. you so much for coming. Yeah. And, uh, you guys are awesome. I love you guys. And uh, you know, I'll be talking to you on Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> and come, come up to the signing, and we'll play some more. And I'll pass out. I'll pass out some more personal answers. Okay. And guys, if everybody could please exit to the doors right at the.